According to son John C. Hamilton, Alexander Hamilton rarely alluded to his personal history, but mentioned with a smile his having been taught to repeat the Decalogue in Hebrew at the school of a Jewess when so small he was placed standing on her side upon a table. So Hamilton biographers often place the school of a Jewess on Nevis, but it is now clear that the Hamiltons were living on St. Eustatius in 1753, from 1756 to 1758, and perhaps much longer. So perhaps this Jewish school was on St. Eustatius rather than Nevis. By the time Alexander Hamilton was born, the Jewish community on Nevis had all but disappeared. Nevis's Jewish population peaked at about 75 individuals in 1724, but it was closer to zero by Hamilton's time. In contrast, St. Eustatius had a thriving Jewish community. A new synagogue was built there in 1737, and about 350 Jews lived on the island in 1781. It would therefore make more sense, based on the population and also the Hamilton timeline, for this school of a Jewess, which Hamilton attended, to be on St. Eustatius rather than Nevis. Yeah, so here we have the walls of uh, the synagogue of St. Eustatius, or Stasia as we uh, call it on the island. It was built in 1739 uh, because from the early 1700s the island started to become the trading hub of the, um, of the Americas. So more and more merchants came to the island. Also Jewish merchants from Curaçao originally, another Dutch Caribbean island, came to Stasia to trade. And at some point, there were enough Jewish men to get permission to build a synagogue. So they also had to ask permission from the government. And they got the permission. And they built this building here. Um, now, the condition for building the synagogue was that it was not visible from the public road, so as not to offend the eyes of the Christians. So in fact, it's standing on this little alley, which is named after it, Synagogue Path. It's the, the back of the synagogue because the front is on that side and the street that it's on is actually a, a, a whole length of a lot further in that direction so that it was hidden. You can see that it is no longer a complete building because when the economy of Stasia ended, that was around 1795, the, the, there was no trade anymore so uh, the Jews left. A lot of them left for uh, St. Uh, Thomas, also St. Croix, um, the east coast of the states, Suriname, which was then a Dutch territory, and Curaçao also, where their ancestors came from. You can still see here in the inside of the synagogue the holes for the beams that held the galleries, because in uh, Orthodox uh, Jewish services the men and the women have to sit separately, so the men set uh, on the ground floor and the ladies set on the upstairs galleries and there you see uh, you see that these are windows but that's a door and there's a brick spiral staircase that leads up to this door. I mentioned uh, the bricks as you can see this is a two, floor, uh, two floor building built entirely from yellow bricks they were imported from the Netherlands uh, the ships that came to the island from the Netherlands um, needed ballast to stabilize the ship for the transatlantic crossing and they went back with uh, sugar especially, rum and uh, indigo wood, coffee etc. But on the way here they needed ballast. So these yellow bricks came from the Netherlands to the island and were considered the most prestigious building material because they were imported. And uh, the fact that this is a large building made completely from imported yellow bricks is an indication of how wealthy and how flourishing the Jewish community on St. Eustatius was at the time. And I find it amazing to realize that when Alexander Hamilton talks about a Jewish lady who taught him and who put him on a table so he could recite the um, Decalogue by heart, and he remembers that that was a Jewish lady, 
to think that that lady actually was inside this building, went up that spiral staircase to the gallery where she could sit with her sisters and her mother uh, to follow the, the, the Jewish service. That all happened in this building. And in fact, we know from property documents that around the, the synagogue was kind of a Jewish quarter because many homes around uh, the synagogue in this area are described as lying there and there behind the synagogue or next to the synagogue or opposite the synagogue. And uh, the owners of those properties were indeed uh, Jewish people. So um, it's very well possible that, uh, because in those days you also had private teachers. So uh, it's very well possible that, um, I, well, it, that Alexander had his teachings from this lady in one of the buildings that were standing here around the, uh, the synagogue. But it's, tr it's, fair, it's certain that when he lived here, he walked on this path. Yeah, and this is something very, very special. Uh, the fact that, that it was found again and uh, located and uh, uncovered. It's the mikvah. Every synagogue had a mikvah and it's the ritual bath. So there were times in the lives of uh, an Orthodox a Jewish person when they ritually cleansed themselves. So of course there was a little structure around and over the bath for privacy. And again, uh, when uh, Alexander Hamilton remembers how there was this Jewish lady that uh, gave him private lessons, uh, she will have used this mikvah. She will have had, she will have descended on these stairs into the mikvah for her ritual bath. So again, um, it's something that is um, very tangible and relates to Alexander Hamilton.